Have you ever wondered why when you put a kettle or a jug on the boil it has that roaring sound that gets louder and then gets quieter again? I've looked into this before and it's some quite interesting science in there, but when I moved into this new flat here, I found that we have a glass jug or kettle. Uh, so we can actually see that science in action. When looking into it a bit more closely, I noticed there's a couple of interesting phenomena going on there. So uh, let's take a look. As electricity passes through the element in the bottom of the jug, it heats up. Simple enough. That heat is transferred to the water inside the jug. The water that's right next to the element heats up a lot, and at 100 degrees Celsius, it starts to boil. When water boils and changes to water vapor, it turns into a gas. So what you get is bubbles of water vapor forming. That gas is less dense than the water around it, and so the bubbles start to rise. But as they rise, they transfer some of their energy back to the surrounding water. As the bubble cools back down to less than 100 degrees Celsius, the water vapor changes back into liquid water, and so the bubble very suddenly implodes. This implosion is called cavitation, and it creates a bit of a sound when it happens, kind of like a bubble popping. All of these tiny bubbles cavitating is the roar that you hear. Once the water gets hot enough, the water vapor bubbles can stay intact all the way to the surface, so you start to hear fewer of them cavitating. That's why the roar gets quieter the closer you get to boiling. Now you may have noticed something else going on inside the kettle as it got hotter. Let's rewind. Do you see how the water starts to get cloudy? These are tiny bubbles, but they're not forming at the element. That's because they're not made of water vapor, they're gases that were dissolved in the water. Most gases can dissolve into water, at least a little bit, and the amount that can dissolve depends on the temperature and the pressure. Fizzy drinks are full of dissolved carbon dioxide that was put there under pressure, so when you release the pressure, the gas escapes. Similarly, the colder the water, the more gas you could dissolve into it. The water in my tap was in contact with the air at some point, and some of the air dissolved into it. When you raise the temperature of the water, not all of the air can stay dissolved, and so it goes back into the gas phase, forming these tiny, cloudy-looking bubbles. This is the same phenomenon that causes fish to die when ponds get too hot. The pond water can't hold as much dissolved oxygen, and so the fish suffocate. Now as the water cools back down, some more of the air will dissolve back in, but that process takes time, and if you allow the water only a little while to cool before boiling it again, you won't get those same cloudy bubbles forming again, just the water vapour bubbles at the element. Okay, well I hope that explains something that you were curious about, or maybe something that you'd never even thought about before. Or maybe you don't even own a kettle. Anyway, I'd like to keep doing these videos, so uh, give me the encouragement by liking this one, subscribing, checking out my other videos, all that fun stuff.